Good afternoon. In front of you is the Arthur Johansson Primary School, ready to present you three items. The first one is talking about the Big Four Agenda. The Big Four Agenda is a plan in Kenya which has been started by our government to ensure our better is our lives are going better. Big Four Agenda consists of many things. Examples are food, education, and better housing including even our industries. Raisa Meleta Raisa Meleta The Big Four Agenda Kuboresha Taifa La Kenya Biwanda Vitu Vimarike Chabula Bura Kiyongezi Na Afya Bura Imarike Makao Bura Yongezi
time for Africa. Samina, mina, eh, eh, waka, waka, eh, eh. Samina, mina, sakalewa, anawa, ah, ah. Samina, mina, eh, eh, waka, waka, eh, eh. Samina, mina, sakalewa, it's time for Africa. Chris, why don't you take it away? Okay. Uh, welcome, everybody. Delighted that you are all here. Um, my name is Chris Bradshaw, and 18 years ago, I founded the African Library Project. I was inspired during a pony trucking trip in Lesotho. And since then, many thousands of people uh, in the US, Canada, and in 13 African countries have all joined together to help create um, many, many thousands of libraries. And our key to success, one of them, has been having partner summits uh, in person every other year, uh, almost since our very beginning. And um, we gathered for one week, rotating from country to country. But um, since then, we've had COVID. And uh, these partner summits are specifically designed for our partners to be able to share best practices and then go back home and uh, implement those best practices in their own countries. Um, we've had some really incredible ideas emerge during our partner summits, like uh, culture corners in every library, um, having classroom libraries splitting up our shipments into each class so that uh, kids have access to them within their own class. Um, and also things like members of parliament joining with us to uh, help promote library development in their own countries. So in this virtual summit, uh, due, thanks due to COVID, um, we would like to continue to share those learnings and challenges to support each other. Since it's online, we invited the entire African Library Project community to join us and to get to know our partners better and to get an inside look at their work. Uh, I wanted to give a special shout out this morning to, um, hi, Sharon Allen. Hi. Yeah. She's joining us from Texas and she has done you know, over a hundred libraries through um, the inc her incredible network in New York and in, um, in Texas, not Texas, New Mexico. Sorry Thank about you. that. Sorry about that, yeah. Um, Charles and Duca, it's nice to see you here as well. Um, and Ernest has come from uh, Kenya. Hey. Hello, Charles. Yes, nice to see you. Oh, um, my daughter Mariah is here. She's in Chile this morning. <laughs> uh, so we have many continents all over and we have uh, lots of people who have um, 
who are joining us. So that's really terrific. Um, the, I just want to say this meeting is being recorded and it will be uh, transferred later to YouTube for uh, later viewing for those people who cannot come at this specific time. Please use your Q&A this morning unless you are a panelist to be able to communicate. Uh, if you are a panelist, use the chat function in Zoom, which you'll find down at the bottom of your screen. Um, and I'd like to just get started right now by uh, people that are um, not panelists to use the, um, the Q&A function to just go there right now and type in um, where you are in the world and how you are connected to the African Library Project, whether that be a book drive organizer, a donor, uh, a staff member, a volunteer, um, somebody from another country who's interested in our work and wanted to get more ideas about um, what we're doing and how we do it. And let me see if I can. Okay. <laughs> I see Yvonne is on there uh, and Kathy Rokup from New Mexico. And Yvonne has a question. I'm hoping somebody will answer. Um, and I think at this point, I am going to um, introduce Lauren Small, our electric our electric, electric <laughs> executive director, <laughs> who is joining us from the East Coast this morning. And uh, take it away, Lauren. Thank you. I'm so That mute button's always so tricky. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here and to have you all here learning more about ALP from our Kenyan partners. ALP has started near, nearly 3,700 libraries in 13 countries with books collected and sent by volunteers in the US and Canada. In 2023, we hope, hope to send enough books for 330 libraries to seven countries, Botswana, Ghana, Lesotho, Malawi, Uganda, South Africa, and Kenya, of course. If you're interested in being a part of our community by creating a library, consider signing up as a book drive organizer today. Our book drive mailing dates are listed on our website and signups for Ghana and Malawi are now open. It's the perfect project to do with your community, family, classmates, or even yourself. And now is a great time to ask your friends and family to sort through their books during the holidays. ALP has been working in Kenya since 2016. Um, we have two partners in the country, Rongo University and Kababi University. Today, we're honored to have the vice chancellors of both universities here with us to give welcoming remarks. Then after they have concluded, we'll hear directly from the university staff members doing the work of ALP in Kenya. Now it is my pleasure to introduce Professor Samuel Gudu, the Vice Chancellor of Rongo University. Okay, thank you so much, Lauren, for uh, giving me opportunity to say something about uh, the Africa Library Project. I want to welcome all of us to the African Library Project Virtual Summit, which is taking place after the COVID pandemic that disrupted all the in-person summits. And uh, we are excited to be able to do this virtual summit. And therefore I welcome everybody to this summit. I would like to thank the African Library Project 
and the partners for organizing and participating in in a number of uh, book drives that enable us to build and improve sustain the libraries in in several communities and in our schools and primary schools i would like to thank uh, my colleague professor Odeo Ipara of Kibabi University who happily joined us so that we work together to improve the library situation in both uh, primary and uh, some secondary schools and uh, i want to say thank you professor ipara and i want to also thank uh, the partnership that has been going on between uh, our university kibabi and uh, and rongo university and the cooperation that we have got from the three counties that are handling the African Library Project. And that is Migori County, where Rongo University is situated, and Homa Bay County, and then Bungoma County. The officers we normally meet from those counties, especially when we do the book, uh, when we distribute the books, have been very, very grateful for this activity. And uh, I would want to extend their greetings and also their happiness and, and gratitude to those uh, organ who thought about the African Library Project. Uh, Chris and Deborah, we want to say thank you so much for what you have done to our schools and also to give us the opportunity to serve the communities in the, in the way we are distributing the books. So far, the African Library Project in Kenya has given us opportunity to distribute 270,000 books since it was started. And we have distributed to a total of 224 schools. Community, we have one community uh, library and the university libraries. So a total of uh, 270,000 books have been donated for which we are extremely grateful. We have also trained in this project the teacher librarians and community librarians so that they would understand how to utilize the books and also gain the knowledge on how to help those who are going to, uh, students who are going to use the libraries. They assist the learners to know how to use the books better and also develop a culture of reading starting from the early age, their early age. These libraries have been uh, very, very important to us. We have seen the benefits of this library. They have helped us in promoting cognitive um, development, the imagination for our, the readers. They have improved in their language because English in Kenya is uh, a second, uh, almost a third language, the second language, but you remember most of the ethnic groups in Kenya have got their unique languages. And then they have to do Kiswahili, which is also a national language. But then the English is our medium of communication. And therefore, because these books are written in English, the, the teachers give us a feedback that the students have got opportunity to speak English because they read it and also encourage the emotional development and personality because they can now speak in English and express themselves better. I want to say the children who are using these books from, the, from what we get from uh, the teachers when they come to pick the books are more self-confident. They are having interpersonal relationship which is improved because they can now speak English a little better than what they had uh, to do, especially town schools where People, students are mixed, pupils are mixed, they get opportunity to be able to speak in English so that they don't fall back to their mother tongue <laughs> and uh, which could interfere with the, with, with the communication. So as a project, we are extremely grateful and on behalf of our stakeholders, we want to thank again and indicate to us that uh, the African Library Project is extremely useful to us as the institutions.
recently, Rongo, that's last week, Rongo University was uh, audited by the Commission for University Education. They were looking at what we do and were looking at how do we fit into the community where Rongo University is situated. They were looking at who are our stakeholders, what feeling do they have about the university. And when they saw the number of books that Rongo University has distributed through uh, Africa Library Project, we were, we were given a very high commendation for what we do to the communities. And therefore, African Library Project is giving us opportunity to do part of corporate social responsibility, which would have not been there had it not been with the support from African Library Project. So I want to say that as we continue in this project, we have seen the benefits of this project in terms of marketing the university and also making the university relevant to the place where the university is situated. I want to say we are very much willing to continue with this project. We are extremely excited to see it grow from strength to strength and to reach many more learners. As we, the project enters its sixth years and we start on 2023, we will we, we think we should conduct a tracer studies now to give to the give uh, the, this project the details of what we can be able to list in terms of how it has actually helped the students. We want to look at has it improved the performance in national exams? We want to check how has it given these students uh, who have studied through, I mean, looked at these books, what improvements in terms of academic performance they have, uh, they have attained. Once again, uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so, so much. Rongo University is grateful. And I want to repeat that we are extremely grateful for everything that uh, uh, has happened in this project. And we, we want to say we are lucky that we were included in this project from the beginning. Thank you so much. May God bless you all. Back to you, Lawrence. Thank you, Professor Gudu. I am now pleased to welcome Professor Isaac Ipara Odeo, the Vice Chancellor of Kababi University. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Lorraine. I wish to start by thanking uh, most profoundly uh, Deborah for the invite and expressing my appreciation for the privilege of meeting, although virtually the founder of this project, Chris. May I also take this opportunity to welcome all the stakeholders on board as we all participate in the African Library Project Virtual Summit. Uh, this uh, summit is coming at a very opportune time. Kibabi University is celebrating 10 years of its existence in, um, in two weeks time. Uh, we are located in uh, Bungoma County, which is about 400 kilometers from Nairobi the capital city of, um, of Kenya. Bungoma has a population of about 1.8 million people. And most of these people are living below the poverty, poverty line. Uh, we have uh, 961 primary schools and 306 uh, secondary schools. All these schools face serious challenges in terms of provision of infrastructure. It is therefore not surprising that the library uh, receives the least priority. So the African Library Project has come in very handy to provide the much needed reading resources 
or some of these schools. We are happy as Kebab University to work with African Library Project to achieve one of our mandates, and that is community service. And we, as we do that, we are aware that this project has enabled us to also contribute towards the attainment of the sustainable development goals. I'm talking specifically about goal number four, which is quality education. And this we are able to execute through your project, uh, through the partnership, which is goal number 17, number 17, sustainable development goal number 17, that is partnership and linkages. So this partnership has helped us contribute towards quality of life by improving the reading culture in the schools. So far, we have um, distributed 47,000 volumes of books mm -hmm. to 41 schools and community libraries. We came in to the project a little late, so we have been in for two years. And I wish to thank Professor Gudu and Rongo University for holding our hand and helping us to join the African Library Project. Our assessment reveals that this project has had a big positive impact on schools and the community. If I can just pick maybe one or two points, we have noticed a clear upside of inquiries from those who have benefited because they want more and they, their neighbors who have not benefited who would like to join this project. The mentorship we give to teacher librarians has also had a positive impact on the effective management of the libraries. Mm -hmm. And so far we have trained 47, 46 uh, mm -hmm. teacher librarians. So now they can take care of the books well, and the books have a longer life shelf uh, after training. The culture of reading now has caught up with the children, very delighted to, 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 to read the many uh, books that address diverse um, spheres or disciplines of knowledge. But more importantly, the librarians now are able to protect the books and this will therefore ensure that these books are there for even others who come after the current ones. Uh, for us as a university, this has uh, given us a high rating within the community. It has also raised our publicity and profile. And we feel very happy about that. It is helping us attract students to some of our programs. Now, as we go continue, as we move forward with this project, my very strong plea would be that we enhance this project so that we can have more books to benefit more, more schools and more community um libraries and then we can have this a little more frequently if we have more books and we train more then the impact will be even greater so i wish once again to thank uh, rongo university for introducing us to this project and to thank all the stakeholders who are participating in this virtual summit thank you very much and over to you, Laurie.
Thank you. We appreciate the leadership and support from professors Gudu and Odeo for the African Library Project. Every year their staff collects applications from schools and communities eligible for libraries and enters all the data into the ALP database. Then when the container arrives, they are responsible for clearing the container through customs, transporting the libraries across the country to universities, to their universities, and the distributing the libraries to each school. Perhaps most importantly, they train the teacher librarians and stay in touch with them to support them in their work. Today, we will hear from two of those staff members, Joel Nakatari and Samuel Wakahia, in conversation with Mariah Levin, ALP volunteer, and also Chris's daughter. And then later in the program, Deborah Lustig, the ALP volunteer who is our liaison to Kenya, will moderate our community chat. But first, we have a video for you. My name is Morgan Chora, the head teacher at Masara Primary School. Our school is in uh, Sunawe Sub County, Migori County. Masara Primary School is a public day mixed school. Uh, our school has a long story. It started way back in uh, 1967 to date. We boast of uh, a child population of uh, 1,013. Mm, we want to say we are very much grateful to the African Library Project in collaboration with the Rongo University for uh, the donation that they have been giving to school in terms of library materials. Our records show that uh, to date we have received slightly over 2,000 books from uh, this organization and uh, our library is for both academic and uh, public use. We have seen a great improvement in terms of literacy. Uh, our teachers have also benefited so much from the library because uh, they are getting materials with authentic information which are important for their preparations for delivering the classes. Uh, I also want to say that uh, the library has been beneficial to the community at large because we allow members of the community to borrow books, they read, 
and then they return to us. On the side of pupils also, I want to say that uh, the pupils have benefited in that uh, with the use of this library, there is an uh, individualized development. A child can go there, read a book of his or her own choice, and uh, that has also seen them develop skills that we feel are beneficial for life. Otherwise, thank you. That is what I had to say. Fantastic. Well, I'm really excited now to enter into a conversation uh, with Samuel and Joel, who are the boots on the ground uh, every day working on the African Library Project and working with all of the schools and the partners in the community. And I think just to get us started, um, Joel, I'd love to maybe start with you and just can you ground us in Kenya? Can you tell us, give us a sense of what the communities you're, you're working in are like, where they're located, what are the special aspects of Kenya that we should appreciate and love that you love? Um, take us away. Thank you very much, uh, Maria. Allow me to begin by acknowledging and saying hi to all the participants, a special recognition to our vice chancellors, all the management of LP, staff and colleagues from Kibabi and Rongo, the country coordinators on board, the teacher librarians, and all the literary champions. We welcome you to this summit. I also want to appreciate the fact that uh, there are many Kenyans online who know a bit more about Kenya, but just allow me to say one or two things. Uh, one, uh, if you uh, have a chance to come to Kenya, uh, Kenya has a, a great population. The people of Kenya are full of life, quite innovative, and they have quite diverse cultures in the foods, the way they live their life, and the likes. But again, for those who love athletics, I'm sure you must have already uh, seen some of our athletics, athletes, different uh, races, especially marathons, triple chairs, and the likes. But uh, something special to mention, uh, which uh, very few people may be aware, we have quite a number of parks. You have a chance to be around. You are feel welcome to visit our parks. Nairobi uh, is the only city uh, probably in the world with a national park. It would be interesting for you to visit. And lastly, we say Kenya the crown of mankind. We have over 700 fossils that tell almost all the evolution story of mankind. So that one gives you a bit of context just about Kenya. But uh, we have a population majorly in rural and urban areas, but most of the Kenyan population are in the rural areas. I think that's just a bit of a country. Thank you, Mara. Thanks, Joel. And Samuel, do you have anything you want to add to ground us? Uh, maybe just to mention uh, from where Joel left that uh, the country Kenya has 47 different uh, counties. Uh, the country uh, has 42 different tribes. So we are actually a country that uh, has different cultures. Then our temperatures within the country range from between 16 degrees Celsius to 32 degrees Celsius, depending on which particular one of the best tourist attraction destinations globally. Thank you. Awesome, thanks. So uh, as we go through this, we have about 20 minutes where this will be kind of an interview format. We'll all ask some questions to Joelle and Samuel. And then I really want to open it up to the audience, both the panelists and uh, the other attendees to ask the questions that you're interested in, because that way I know we all know that someone is, is really interested in it. But I think um, to kind of move us more into uh, book land, library land, um, 
Joelle, let's start with you. And I'd love to hear, um, how did you get involved working with books as a librarian? What was it like growing up for you? Did you have access to books? Um, can you tell us a little bit of your story? Thank you, Mara. Like many other Kenyan children, I was born and brought up in a village in the Great Rift Valley. And uh, I have quite uh, memorable moments of my childhood. But uh, sadly, one of the things that I don't have good memories is the experience to read books at a very early age. I went to a government funded uh, public primary school. And uh, by then, the schools were few, far much apart, and they had limited resources, as Prof has indicated, which is the case still up to today. But uh, we had uh, textbook programs in the school so that the government would send a few textbook books for the teachers. So the little experience you could have with the books is when the teacher would come in uh, in class, maybe read a book for us, but just to have an experience of a book in the hands, I came to have that experience far much later in my education uh, uh, journey. That is when I was in secondary school. I got a chance to interact with books. I love books. I, by the second year in my high school, uh, the school management had noticed my love for books and I was made a school librarian. And looking back, that is when I even made up my mind of uh, becoming a professional librarian. And I'm glad that uh, since then I've had an opportunity not just to work in the library, but more importantly to participate in different literacy activities. And uh, I have a special mention for LP, it has been a life changing and I appreciate for that opportunity. Thank you. Thanks, Joel. And actually, while we're still kind of on you, um, I know that you do not work alone. You're representing um, Rongo University right now in the work with the project, but do you want to just mention some of your team members who also work on African Library Project? Thank you. The LP project in Kenya has had quite a number of people giving their hand and I have a special mention to each and every person who has actively participated. But at the university and my colleagues in the library department, I thank them, a special mention to me, Cheng, Irene, and all those each and every time there's an activity that voluntarily gone out, out of passion for the librarianship, uh, to do something positive for the community. I also want to thank uh, my colleague and friend in the profession, Charles Nuko, who was our linkage person with the Kibabi University. And uh, I'm happy that she's online just to see that the seed she planted is growing. Special mention also to the first team we worked with. In our first container, we worked with an organization called Project Humanity. And uh, they really assisted us to start off, and I'm happy that uh, we are doing the fifth container after starting off with the Project Humanity. So each and every person, especially our university management for the support they have continued to give us on different activity, we really appreciate. Thank you. Fantastic. And so Joel uh, has been working with African Library Project for six years now. And Samuel, you are brand new. You just stepped in about three months ago, taking over for um, the previous person who was in your role. So I would love to also learn about your background, your childhood, what it was like growing up, how you got involved with libraries, and then anyone else who's supporting you with Kababi University. Okay. Uh... But just before I even speak about uh, my background and everything, I also want to make a very special mention to Charles Luko, who is with us tonight. She's actually pre my predecessor and uh, my mentor for this particular uh, role that I've actually taken over. <clears throat> and uh, I'm actually turning three months uh, with African Library Project to tonight. 
I have been had started uh, this particular assignment on the 17th of August. And uh, I'm a librarian by profession, and I was born and brought up in a place called Kikuyu at the central parts of the country, Kenya. So I come from a family of six children. Uh, we are, uh, there are two, two ladies. I have two sisters and three brothers. And I'm the eldest son of my parents. And uh, just, like, just like Joel, uh, growing up, uh, I actually went to a public school and uh, I didn't have access to book collections or even a library. And uh, what I remember uh, from the very early stages is that I loved collecting items such as newspaper cuttings, photographs, and many other items. And I believe that's exactly what it is that built the passion that I have today for collection development. Over and above building collections, I also remember having a liking for gadgets, gadgets such as Walkmans, uh, radio cassettes, which actually brought me later on in life into dealing with systems. So when I combine these two passions, I believe that's exactly what it is that brought me to where it is that I am today, a systems librarian. Somebody might be asking exactly what a systems librarian does, but uh, you're like basically the ICT technician within the library. Yeah, thank you. Fantastic. Thanks, Samuel. Okay, so we learned a little bit about you. I'm trying to kind of zoom in slowly here. So I want to zoom in now on some of the schools that we serve um, to get a sense of what, what they are like. So um, Joelle, could you walk us through and just tell us a little bit about what the primary schools look like? I know uh, Professor Gudu mentioned that there's over 900 um, that, that, yes, perfect. <laughs> Thank you, Mariah. In the country, we have around uh, 32,000 uh, primary schools, and these schools are owned or funded uh, in two streams. There are those, the majority, who are funded by the government, and uh, we also have a number of schools uh, run by individuals, organizations. We better call them private schools, private prim, uh, primary schools. Majority of them, again, are mixed gender. And they... But something uh, to mention about the primary school education in Kenya, two key important uh, activities. In the year 2002, the government uh, directed that the primary education in Kenya should be free and compulsory. And this saw quite uh, a number of kids who could not have a, a chance to go to school enrolling. And this came with the repercussion, the high population in school vis-a-vis uh, -vis the limited resources in terms of classrooms, teachers, and the teaching materials. And uh, one of the areas that was affected most was the uh, school libraries. Likely in the new primary education still, the textbook program was still maintained. And therefore to date, the government still uh, sends the textbook uh, to be used in classroom to the libraries. But we still don't have school libraries in Kenya. What is envisioned is that we have books that can be used in class and after class uh, when the kids are abused the uh, teachers, then they are taken back to the bookstore. So majorly all primary school, public, mostly public primary schools in Kenya have bookstores. I don't have a trained librarian or teacher librarian to assist the pupils, but rather just the books to pick, uh, use, and then return to, to the library. Thank you. Fantastic, thank you. And I think uh, that's kind of a theme that we're seeing where, where African Library Project is really filling a need that especially primary schools are facing. 
Um, Samuel, would you tell us about what secondary schools look like? Yeah, uh, start by mentioning that there are slightly over 10,000 secondary schools in Kenya. And uh, these secondary schools are mainly in two broad categories. They are those that are privately sponsored, or rather simply schools that are owned by individuals, and there are others that are government sponsored, uh, simply schools that are actually uh, run by the government. So to break that further down, there are modes of studies where we have day scholars and boarders. Day scholars in the sense that uh, learning happens during the day and in the evening, the students go back home. And boarders, these particular students are accommodated within the school. And to gain access into secondary school through an outgoing curriculum, there's a, there's, there's a new curriculum that's actually being proposed and uh, the, through outgoing, the, the one that's outgoing, you have to sit a national examination that's called the Kenyan Certificate of Primary Education. And in the same way, in order to transition to the tertiary level of learning, after the four year duration of study, you are expected to sit a national examination. That is the Kenya Certificate for Secondary Education. The project comes in to most secondary schools in Kenya in the sense that uh, we do not, as per se, have uh, books, book collections within secondary schools, apart from those ones that are curriculum based. Most of the books that you'll find in secondary school spaces are the ones that only support the curriculums. Hence, the additional resources enhance what we call a culture of reading. Another aspect is that broadly, the government in Kenya does not hire librarians for, for, for both primary schools and secondary schools. And therefore, training people who can be in a position to manage the collections once the small sustainable libraries have been established then becomes a very paramount aspect. And uh, the African Library Project Initiative, therefore, and especially uh, what I can see within the county of Bungoma uh, has, has been very handy towards assisting you know, uh, to impact skills to the, to, the, to the teacher librarians themselves so that now they can help in the management of the small sustainable libraries established. Thank you. Thanks, Samuel. And so I think a theme that I'm, I'm hearing between both of you is there are these free library or free um, education rather and for, for some students, but the flip side is that there aren't always enough resources. Um, Joelle, I know when we were talking beforehand, you told me about one of the best practices in the schools involving alumni. Would you talk about one of those best practices so that some of our other partners might be able to use that idea and, and build off of it? I think maybe a bit of a background why uh, the issue of uh, involving alumni in the school uh, came up. Well, uh, when free primary school education was started, the intention was to have each and every school, uh, every kid in school. But then along the line, we still had quite a number of kids at home and the excuse then was that uh, the schools were still asking uh, parents to give some sort of uh, contribution or payment for different fees. So the government came up and say, no, going forward, the little that you get from the, the government, you need to find a way of surviving. And this directive was made, I think, 2015 or 2016, when we were just starting with LP and we are trying to tell the teachers, you need to convince the parents uh, to support in uh, setting up the libraries. So it was very difficult. But then, uh, I'm glad that some teachers out of the love and the passion for this project, they saw a way out and a special mention the head teacher, Asa Johansson uh, Primary School, who then so he tried to approach some of the 
uh, former pupils of the school who were in different places. And indeed, they went ahead and formed uh, some sort of a WhatsApp group. They looked for themselves. Then he gave them the idea that, yes, we have a school, but it's in entire need of your support. And uh, he requested them to support the library. And uh, when I met the teacher in our normal M and E visits, he was very happy that they went much over the library. They have really assisted the school in uh, mobilizing for resources to repair the classroom, motivating teachers for better results, and the pupils who excel in the co-curricular activities. And me, I felt this is something good, especially for our Kenyan partners and others who uh, could be struggling how to look for resources. Can we uh, teach our teacher librarian or encourage our teacher librarians and teachers participating in the project to try and consolidate the alumni so that they can be able to support the school and more so the literacy activities? Thank you. Yeah, I think that's such a great example. And I know when you first told me about that, I thought I haven't, I haven't heard about that before. So I hope that gives some inspiration to some of the other partners on this call. And um, I wanna just remind everyone to please put your questions in the Q&A function and I'll ask a couple more questions. I have a bunch, so no worries. We don't have questions, but if you do, please put them in. We'd love to hear from you. Um, so kind of, so we, we just talked about a best practice. You're obviously doing a fantastic job with your work in Kenya. And I also know that there are extreme challenges that you need to face. <laughs> so um, Joelle, would you talk us through some of those challenges? What have been the, the top challenges? Um, definitely not all of them. I know we don't have enough time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, for me, I would not want to call challenges or rather general in life. I look at challenges as opportunities, opportunities to learn, opportunities to think a little bit more opportunities to change our tact in whatever we are doing. And yes, we have had a few issues uh, or challenges as you call them. And also we've tried to see how best to go around it. Uh, I can mention one or two just uh, uh, for the purpose of this. But majorly when we started again, I discovered getting the applic good application was a real challenge from the schools. Many people would want to get the books, but the process, how do you go about applying and getting good uh, application? It was quite an issue. And uh, we thought, because then we'd be on call, supporting one teacher after the other, or visiting the school, or the teacher will have to travel all the way to campus. And we thought, what if we use our own staff so that we do an aggressive marketing within the university? Uh, among our staff members, take time to explain to them so that when they go home, maybe over the weekend or holiday, then they would go with those applications. The teachers explain to them, assist them to fill, they come with them to campus, and then we also check. And that one has really assisted us to improve uh, the applications, but also to involve more staff members in the project. And then uh, the second, which actually I should have started with it, from onset, the resources that are needed just to clear, transport, train teacher librarians, uh, they are quite uh, an amount, and therefore there's need to budget to plan for it. And from onset, we were like, how do you go about it? And that is when we thought, would we think of a good partner to bring on board so that we share the cost? And that's how the MOU between Drongo University and Kibabi came in, and therefore, possibility of partnering, working together. And for us, we are lucky that it is not just about the resources we are sharing, but even the human uh, resource itself. Kibabi and Ronga has become like one. Coincidentally, I'm making this presentation from Kibabi University because I was around Bungoma for a different activity. And I did not need much permission to walk in because of this project. And lastly, is a we would give books, but uh, just to get to have a feeling what is happening on the ground, we would have a challenge to really get, you'll be told on phone, but you still want to see and feel. And uh, 
I'll be sharing later on that we then came up with an idea. What if we sample a few schools every year? Maybe four or five schools, just to have a feeling of 10 schools. So we came up with an M and E program, which I could share a bit more uh, later on, how we try to just uh, monitor the project to ensure that each and everything is going on well. Thank you. Yeah, you've, you've had your fair share of challenges and also solutions. So really kudos um, to, what do we say at the Larry Project? We say, uh, oh God, I'm forgetting. Yeah. Kilo. Kilo. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's kilos. <laughs> um, so I think before I transition into a few of the questions that have come in, um, we have a video from uh, an all-girls school um, about some of the impact of the work. And I think it really speaks to some of the challenges that, that you've brought up. So can we play that video, Deborah? I'm Rosalind Achieng Wandigi, the deputy at teacher Masara Primary School and also the woman rep at Migori branch. I want to say that uh, the books that uh, the Rongi University has been giving us has given us, uh, our learners, a very big deal. Uh, the books have also made our learners to be in school because the books that they have been reading has helped them in a great deal. Uh, the books have also inspired them because they also read other ladies and women who have worked hard and they have also moved to different levels of education. And this one has also really encouraged the girl child. I want to encourage the Rengu University so that they may come continuously to help our learners. It is a good, good motive. And out of that, uh, maybe the issue of dropping out of school, the books have kept our girls in school. Yes. So. Uh, being that I'm the deputy of the school and also a woman, uh, the project has really assisted our girls and this one has also made them to reduce in uh, these early marriages and because of this gold mine, I want to encourage our learners, our parents, so that they continue helping them in reading the books. I love that. I love to see how far reaching the impact is. It seems like you're just supplying books, but then actually it, it can change lives. Um, so I want to turn to some of the questions that have come up in uh, the chat and the Q&A. Um, one question that's come up a couple of times is how do we get involved, especially folks in Kenya, there's people who want to get involved in helping with the project and um, Specifically in the, let me look up. Um, oh, in the. Uh, the Mount Kenya area. Mount Kenya region, yeah. Um, how they can get involved. What's what's the what's the advice? Who do they contact? What what do people do? And I don't know, uh, Samuel or Joel. I'm not sure who the best person to answer this is. I think maybe Joelle might be having problems with tech. So, Samuel, do you know how to get involved? I hope you can hear me now. Oh, yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, uh, we've, uh, uh, have we tried to involve other stakeholders? Yes, we try as much as possible. Um, but uh, some of these interventions, uh, especially the approach we've taken, the quick interventions for the schools that we're able to reach is just to give them the books and to train. But on the wider scope, we try to work with the Ministry of Education representative within our locality, the county government. Uh, we have devolved government, so we involve them. Actually, the K-1, I remember the K-1 had uh, quite a good arrangement with the county government to just work together to identify the schools that need the support. And we are trying to work on an arrangement to see if we could get a bit more support from the county government. We are hoping that along the line as we work, 
more of these players and partners will come on board. But I want to acknowledge the issue of trying to bring on board the corporates. Uh, that one we've not done much, but it is something good for us to try and see if uh, there are a few corporates can work with us. Thank you. Great, and actually along those lines, um, we've had a question come in from um, Samuel in Uganda from the Firm Foundation Education Trust. And uh, his question is, have you made efforts in bringing on board other stakeholders outside of kind of the mainstream education sector, which might be policymakers or banks or telephone companies, newspapers, media houses? Um, what, what has worked, what hasn't worked? I, I think that's the question. And Joe, I think you're probably best positioned to answer this too, but Samuel, jump in, please, if you, if you have thoughts. Um, okay, Sam. Uh, if I could speak briefly about uh, the, the teacher training uh, that actually happened a couple of months ago here in Kibabi. Uh, we tried as much as, to, as, as we could to bring on board uh, a couple of uh, those that we felt uh, should actually, apart from the teacher librarians themselves, we tried as much as we, can, we could to bring on board the school heads themselves as a way to try and get the, the buy-in aspect so that now it does not become uh, a case of only having the teacher librarians come get trained and eventually go to their schools to start the libraries. But uh, the, the, the heads themselves, because they are also in a position of authority and they are actually best positioned to try and bring in uh, additional stakeholders depending on the, the positions that they, have, depending on their networks based on the particular positions that they have. Well, that, uh, that is part of what it is that we have explored. But gradually as time goes by, uh, as we get deeper into this particular uh, initiative, then we will definitely explore additionals. Uh, besides, uh, I believe the county officials themselves would embrace this particular initiative and support immensely towards enhancing the aspect of reading culture within the counties. Well, do you have anything you want to add to that, either what you have done or what you plan to do in terms of other types of partnerships? And I think you're on mute right now. Sorry for that. I was saying we've tried quite a number of um, uh, approaches just to see uh, what can work for us including reaching out to the different government uh, agencies. And I'm glad uh, one of our LP board member now uh, is uh, uh, on board also online from Kenya. And we are trying to see possibilities even through his office, who else can be able to buy into the project so that we try to uh, scale it up, not just uh, for the books, but just to build the culture, the reading culture, even starting with the little books that we already have in the schools. When uh, I was talking about the textbook program in Kenya, I don't remember if I mentioned that even the few books that come from the government, the instruction is use and keep. So the teacher would spend more time to ensure that they are safe other than to spend time to ensure that they are read. And to me, that is a big disconnect so that there's much we can do, even just in creating awareness. For us librarians, one of the librarianship rule, we say books are for reading. A book is for the reader. Give the reader the book. And uh, we really want to ensure that these books, we change the culture. So we are trying to reach out. It is not easy uh, for two reasons. One, the, the perception that there's a textbook program in Kenya, and that should be sufficient. But a textbook program for the teacher, for the classwork is very different from the, a book for leisure reading, uh, which completely that is not catered for. 
even in the new dispensation of the new curriculum, we are talking of almost everything except the books that these users will use, or rather the learning materials that we'll need in the new syllabus. Then number two, one of the bigger challenges is that any uh, effort that you do in a library to be visible, it is very expensive. And we want to uh, really appreciate the books we get because they are good quality books. You walk into uh, a, a bookshop to buy that book, one book will be told 500 or 1,000 Kenyan shillings. That will be around, um, that's 10, 10 US uh, dollars per book, which an average Kenyan family will not manage to afford. So if you want to write, we write a proposal to any organization and say, assist us build a library, assist us uh, do maybe shelves. Immediately they see the figures, then uh, this is a huge project that we might not be able to do much. So we are trying in a small ways, but uh, we've not had much uh, success stories to tell. And uh, for us, those are learning opportunity. They have uh, uh, picked the idea, what if we try to uh, see the corporates? They might not do many libraries, but maybe they will assist to set up a model library so that you just have one model library that can be a point of reference to the rest. That is something we can uh, pursue. Thank you. Um, hi, everybody. I'm Deborah. I'm just going to jump in here because I went very quickly past this slide that um, Joel and Samuel had prepared, and someone asked to see it again. And also a couple of questions have come in from people in different regions of Kenya asking, you know, how can we get an ALP library in our, um, in our county? So um, maybe Samuel, you could talk a little bit about the geography of Kenya and, you know, kind of our logic of focusing in these specific um, counties for, for now. Okay. Uh... Probably just mention in brief once again that Kenya has uh, 47 counties. And uh, the African Library Project Initiative is actually within three counties that is Bungoma, Migori, and Homabi. And uh, actually, uh, the point person at, at, at Bungoma and Joel will actually be within Migori and Homabi counties. And uh, well, uh, we have actually received over, over 27,000 books really from the African Library Project Initiative. Uh, actually, they are, that, that's, that is, they are the books that actually go to the different, uh, the different county, uh, the different libraries themselves. And uh, uh, those particular libraries, we do not just donate the books themselves, but we also do a lot of follow-up to try and, and find out exactly how it is that they are doing. We basically walk a journey with these particular beneficiaries themselves, right from the point when they benefit from the books themselves, from the initiative, all the way through till at a point in time when uh, they are fully, they have been in a position to operate on their own fully, uh, run the libraries independently and independently. And, uh, I mean, primary school libraries and secondary school libraries, as well as special libraries. And uh, there are now two different university libraries because if to, 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 to try and help uh, the, the schools themselves to benefit uh, from the from this particular initiative. We also are beneficiaries in the sense that both university libraries have uh, library uh, ch children libraries, so so that uh, that we actually offer services to the children themselves of the staff as well as the children of of, of the students that are studying within the university. So we have sections that are reserved as children libraries. So we, through the African Library Project, we are able to stock uh, these particular libraries. And uh, we have actually been in a position to train a couple of 
teachers, quite a number, really uh, statistically, we are actually including including this particular year alone, we could be at, at a point where we are more than 350 teacher librarians that we have trained. And uh, therefore, really, uh, we, ours is to try and, and uh, seek as many partnerships as possible so that they can come on board because this particular initiative will be of great benefit, not just uh, to, to, to the schools themselves, but to the, to the specific children who may benefit from this particular initiative. And thank you. Thanks, Samuel. Um, so while we're still on the map, let me just point out that, you know, as Samuel mentioned, since we have this long-term engagement with the, um, with the schools, that's why we're concentrating geographically in these areas. For, so for the moment, we're not expanding um, beyond those, um, beyond those counties. Um, or beyond this region, maybe we'll like add on one more county nearby. It would be our next step. Um, because of course, those of you in Kenya know that the distances are very great. Um, also a question came in about local languages. So um, it was mentioned previously that many languages are spoken in Kenya and I had the pleasure of living in Bungoma County for one year. So a, a language that's spoken there a lot is Kibukusu. So let me say Mlemimuno to those of you from that place. Um, and the language that's spoken mostly around Lake Kisumu is uh, Luo. And a question came in um, earlier from one of our participants. Are there any Luo language books in the schools? So Joelle, do you wanna take that question? Well, uh, we have a very little collection of indigenous uh, languages books and uh, I don't know, it's something maybe as Kenyans, we need to have a conversation because when I was in primary school and those were in uh, schools earlier, we had those uh, books, how they were quietly pulled uh, out of the schools uh, is a discussion for us Kenyans. But currently as we are speaking, we have very few collections. The something we've done uh, as part of this project, just to try and also assist the communities uh, have a keen interest or rather the learners to have a keen interest in their culture is to try and uh, challenge the teachers to ensure that they have a culture corner in their libraries. So quite a number of the schools, especially those in rural villages, they try to put uh, create space for culture corner and because of the changing curriculum, the last schools we visited, I also saw a competence-based corner, competence-based learning corner, CBC corner. So we hope that uh, through the culture corners, then the schools can be able to, or rather the learners can be able to still appreciate their culture, which we really value. And yet we are not doing much to preserve and share it. Thank you. Awesome. So I think as a last question before we move on in our program, um, there's a question from Carolyn, one of our amazing volunteers uh, in the U.S. about what are some of the favorite and most meaningful types of books that learners love to receive? Maybe they're with novels or about nature, culture, what, what, what do you know um, learners love? Maybe I answer that. I wouldn't put my finger on one specific one uh, because the learners uh, preference are quite varied, more so depending on the age. Uh, you notice the young one would want to have more feeling of uh, storybooks than uh, short storybooks, more pictorial. As you go to middle uh, classes, class four, five, they are in that stage of knowing more, exploring, and therefore you find there are also needs changes. Class seven, eight, they're in the experimental and the like. So they, the needs vary uh, depending on the age and also the interest of the uh, kids. Some kids are more inclined to uh, science and therefore they would want the way some is more inclined to gadgets and systems. So I wouldn't put a finger on one specific one. 
All right, keep on sending them all. I think that's what the I think that's what it means. <laughs> so um, thank you, Samuel and Joelle, for um, for answering those questions and for sharing your knowledge. And well, actually, we're going to watch a short video, and then Joelle will share the best practice from Kenya um, around measurement and evaluation. appointed the librarian always very neat yes. and she keeps the library very neat now there was a time when a bus wanted some books from the library okay uh, she told he told me to find some books and i was defeated i looked for them even the teacher librarian looked for them could not get them but, but when we consulted her she said those books are there let me tell you she just came <laughs> Then two, apart from just being a librarian, uh, Spacey has captured a lot in education. She has been now leading out of the 32 candidates in grade 8. Yes. No one can defeat her now. She's position one. Position oh. one all <laughs> ways, all ways. Yeah. And she writes some good English. Okay, creative writings, the best. Wow. Good handwriting, good English, and this teacher for English is here. Okay. So, uh, I think the uh, library has really assisted us in this school. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for sharing with us. Yes. We're so happy you're the librarian. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I'm Owino Dosila, teacher librarian at Asar Johnson Primary School in Migori. Um, we always have uh, library sessions where learners come to the library to read storybooks. As you can see now we are in the library session, the reading is on. This is a session that most learners are always looking forward to. Because we get that uh, for, for, from our findings, we find that most learners have uh, improved in their communication skills, in their composition writing skills, and that is why most of them are always looking forward for this session. It is something that they love very much and they're always looking forward. Whenever books are, new books are brought, new story books are brought, they're always very excited, very happy because of uh, the impact the books has brought in their lives. Great, so I think now we're gonna um, go into the best practice presentation, which Joelle will share, and then we'll have some time for questions after that. And hopefully um, other partners, especially, you'll wanna learn a lot more about this best practice and um, have your own questions. So you can put them in the Q&A function or the chat. Thank you, Mariah. Allow me to just briefly share one of our uh, uh, best practice and uh, I hope that uh, I hope to learn uh, more from uh, other participants and I also hope that for those maybe not uh, doing it, they can be able to try it in their countries. But uh, we discovered that when we just give these books and uh, 
we don't follow up. At times we are not able to tell even the quality of the books, are the kids finding the books useful? Are they uh, integrating them in their learning? So we then uh, thought of uh, once in a while going out to the field just to be able to see for ourselves, talk to the teachers, talk to the learners, and that uh, assists us to improve. So maybe we could just run through the slides and I want to thank Sam, we work together on these slides together. So we try to monitor and evaluate our libraries and this we try once per year, especially in the active year other than uh, when we had the COVID. Whenever we get a container like this year, we got K5. One of our major activities on LP is just to go out, visit, 10 to 15 libraries uh, in a year to be able to see what, how they are finding uh, the books. And we sample libraries uh, in different containers. This one we do intentionally so that we also be able to see the sustainability. The whole idea of the project is to ensure that it's sustainable. We build a culture that is sustainable. So we train teachers, we give them a seed collection we ask them to form uh, maybe the reading clubs. We ask them to work with other teachers. So we go back to see uh, is this happening. And uh, we do this mostly from the library team. The library team, uh, we organize ourselves into teams. We have uh, three colleagues who are quite active in the program. And this, they lead the different teams so, to So assuming we were said we are visiting 12 schools this year. That would be maybe three trips. So trip one would be with one team, trip two, another team, maybe two or three people from the team. And then uh, we are glad that we always will get uh, some support from the university, a small budget to cater for the meals and transport. And mostly for the years we've done, it is around 500 USD. That is around 60,000 Kenyan shillings just to facilitate the movement and the meals. And I uh, also at this point want to thank my colleagues because they would go out voluntarily. And then uh, once in a while, uh, maybe we've gotten some books uh, in form of donation, or there's a time we had the uh, readers. This is also the opportunity when you go out and especially get a school that uh, is doing well or a library that is uh, trying their best, then would go back to a vehicle and uh, as a way of appreciating, give them uh, some of our donations. So it also gives us a, a, an opportunity to encourage the teachers and the schools to continue. So next slide. So I've uh, organized this uh, into three, just to assist us understand what the process of monitoring entails. The first is the pre-visit activities which we do a lot of planning, uh, mapping out which uh, routes we are going to take, making arrangements, how will we move, forming the teams that will participate in the activity, ensuring we have some uh, small budget to facilitate our movement. And if we have uh, a few books in the library that we could donate, then we identify the books uh, to be donated. And then uh, when you go to the field, uh, when you visit the schools in the field, majorly our interest is the usage. So one would want to ascertain uh, the books, are they there? Are they in good condition or are they in, uh, being used? And if they're being used, uh, what is the evidence? Uh, what are users saying? Is it possible to talk to, yeah, if the teacher says I work with the teacher, people librarians, is it possible to talk to them? We also talk to them to find out what are the, the students saying about it. Would uh, we, when allowed, would visit one or two classes or ask to talk to a few pupils just to find out if they are using this library and the books. And I'm glad to report that virtually all schools have gone except one, there was one time we went and we were disappointed with one school, though they had just received the books in the same year, you get quite positive uh, feedback. 
Then uh, once we've uh, checked around uh, what is happening, it is an opportunity for us also now to advise the teachers, the head teacher, the teacher librarians on what can be improved, or maybe a best practice we had observed somewhere and then in another library, maybe it is not happening. Maybe they have rules, but the rules are punitive or they are discouraging the learners to come. They are not displayed. So we advise them on some of the things that they can do to improve the experience uh, of the uh, learners and those who are reading. And lastly, we'll be able to see if there are some gaps that can be able to be addressed in the subsequent teacher training. So this is an opportunity for us just to see uh, what is it that the teachers would want to be supported more. Maybe they are struggling to organize the library. Maybe they are struggling to build the teams. So they are struggling to maintain good records. And then we would emphasize that more in the subsequent uh, training. And lastly, once we are done uh, with the visit, we come back to campus. Uh, again, in our teams, we sit down to analyze, maybe go to the next slide. We sit down to just look at what we found out and uh, we share the experiences. From these experiences, we identify the gaps that can be filled in subsequent uh, teacher training and we prepare the report. I've just uh, attached one of the uh, questionnaire that had been filled by one of the students and you will see even the preference and the reason I'm saying the preference of the books if you look at the responses from the pupils it keeps varying like this particular one had said she prefers storybooks and religious books so they are quite quite different <clears throat> something that keeps coming up and, and I'm glad it is mentioned here is the Kiswahili books or the local books that one keeps coming up. Is it possible to get a few uh, books uh, locally? I think it's something we need to keep discussing within and see if we can get some of the publishers to support the exercise. I did write to two publishers, uh, I think last year or the year before, uh, to just know if they have such an arrangement. I never got a feedback, but it's something we can pass, uh, see more. I think that is the much I can say on our M and E, but there are other small uh, M and E activities that we also do to supplement just the monitoring. So maybe the slight slide one is uh, we try to form up to form WhatsApp group for the different uh, containers, and then something we hear most from the school, especially when we visit, they tend to associate and point the performance uh, of the school, the reading culture, and it's also always our interest to us just to see. And the last visit uh, when we are preparing for this summit, we didn't go to many schools, but it was very clear even in Asa Johansson uh, school, since they received the books, you could see the means of the school has gone up. If time will allow us, we'll be able to see that video briefly. And then uh, once in a while, we we'll do phone calls and then what has really worked and made our work much easier, the link persons at the university, the staff members, I will always know this and this primary school got books courtesy of so and so works in the university. So whenever we meet in the corridor, it is very informal, but it's a very good way for me to just know what is happening. Ah, when are you in the village? How is the school? How are the teachers? How are the pupils? And quite a lot you get a lot of time you get uh, good responses. I think that's what uh, I have. I want to thank you uh, and hope we can have some minutes to just discuss uh, about it. So in conclusion, for us, we take it that uh, it is in failure that we learn. It is in the challenges that uh, we learn. So success doesn't teach as many lessons as failure. So the challenges that you could be going through uh, in the monitoring and evaluation and the whole project kindly consider it as an opportunity to learn. Thank you. I, I love that, um, that phrase and, and thanks for sharing that. Um, well, I, I think Kenya's done a really great job with monitoring and evaluation. We can really see the impact on the schools. Um, before we turn to the Q and A, uh, we have a short video that mentions this kind of in passing a little bit. 
about the impact of monitoring and evaluation from the head teacher at SMJ Johansson. My name is Peter Utienoboke, head teacher at SMJ Johansson Primary School. Personally, I came here in, 19, uh, in 2018. The school was not all that doing well. I found the school at a mean score of 236.86. This thing really disturbed my mind since where I came from the school was doing well. This one made me to sit down with my teachers, BOM, parents and the alumni to see how we can improve the performance of this school. Uh, after sitting down, we came up with some of the strategies. One, uh, proper teaching, proper uh, good library, and uh, good lesson attendance, Impro and also improvements of the classrooms. Uh, now, when it comes to academics, we partnership well with the alumni through the patron, Dr. Edward Aneno, who is uh, working at uh, Rongo University. He put us through Rongo University, which made an effort of connecting us with the ALP. Actually, through this, our school has really improved. We, they gave us books in the year 2020. The mean score of the school at that time was 276.66. Then after effective use of these books and coordination through the alumni, the school moved to a mean score of 282.58. Allow me to thank the Rongo University librarians. Daktari, they keep on coming to supervise how we are utilizing the books and how we manage our library. And I think that is what has brought us too far. And I believe I may be compared to none. I just, just me say myself, I'm very much proud with my library, though I still don't have enough room for studying. But I hope God, through God, will get a very good library where my learners will be learning. And also I want to tell you, this library, the small library that we have, it is not only for our learners. We even support the surrounding, the neighboring, the neighbors. If they want to use these our books, they come, they borrow, and they bring them back. So it is not only the library that is helping the Asar Johansson Primary School. It is also even helping some needy private schools around and even the needy environment, the needy uh, people from, uh, from, the, from within the environment. Allow me to take this opportunity to thank Rongo University in a special way. One, they donated to us books that we are enjoying, and uh, you can even get that one from the children appreciation. These books really help the, our children, our learners, including as teachers. We have some books that are far much advanced to the learners, but we as teachers, we are using them to help us impart knowledge to the, our learners. Awesome. So uh, I want to just make a few moments for questions. We are running a little bit over in our program, but we had some time in our community chat. So I think we're borrowing a little bit of time from that. So um, I think there are two main comments and questions around this. Uh, the first is uh, learning a little bit more about the CBC corners, the competency-based learning corners. And I know, Joelle, that was actually uh, something that you got inspired from from a previous summit in Botswana. Would you just briefly talk about what the CBC corners are and how they're supporting the libraries? Thank you, Mara. Well, for us, when, uh, when I think last time I think Botswana, I really stood out how the communities in Botswana are really investing time and resources just to volunteer and name the different uh, gadgets. And when we came, we taught, or rather we uh, cooperated it in our training for the teacher librarians. 
and quite a number of them went to the schools and started the culture corners. You'd visit many schools, you have a small corner, even if it's not a, a the culture wall, people just label different uh, items to assist people understand the cultures. But then the government has, uh, in the, it is in the process of changing the curriculum and the curriculum is more of a competence based. The learners are given opportunities to work on different projects. And I'm happy that um, many librarians have taken it up upon themselves to create space in uh, libraries to have a CBC corner. So it's just basically an area where learners uh, exhibit uh, what they have been able to work on, be it artwork, beadwork, tailoring and the likes. Thank you. Yeah. I, I love this idea because it allows the learners to show up themselves in the library. We've seen in other countries, I think Botswana has uh, learners make books and they put their own books in the library, which is another great example of this. Um, so I think the final comment that I've been seeing in the chat um, is just a reminder and a thanks from our um, our container managers to thank you for <laughs> sending the photos and the thank you notes um, from the schools to the book drive organizers and to the container managers because that makes a world of difference and a reminder to please keep on doing it because it really makes a difference between whether another library, um, whether a, a person c collects books for another library or not. Um, so with that, I believe I am turning it over to Lauren, or uh, rather, am I going to Deborah? To Lauren. Lauren. <laughs> to Lauren, fantastic, um, for our official closing. So thank you all. Thank you, Mariah and Joel and Samuel for such an informative virtual summit. Learning about you and your work was very insightful. Um, so this concludes our summit, but if you have the time, don't go just yet because we're going to go into an open community chat. Um, so thank you for joining us and I hope you can stay a bit longer. I will turn it over now to Deborah to get our chat going. Thank you, um, Lauren, and let me also add my thanks to um, Joelle and Samuel and Mariah. Um, and actually, I remembered we have one more um, great video that I wanted to be sure to show at, um, at this point before we, because it also includes a thank you to the schools and uh, and the videography team from from Rongo. So let me show that before we um, before we move on to the chat. Is teacher Annie Todur. I'm a teacher at Asar Johannesson Primary School. This is our library, and I'm a teacher librarian librarian here. As you can see, our library has got different sections. We have a section particularly for storybooks, and these storybooks. We are very thankful because they were all donated by ALP. Uh, we have another section here. It is called CBC Corner. And here, uh, learners, our learners portray different art. This is their art, artwork. CBC stands for competency-based curriculum. As you can see, this is a... Uh, one of their uh, of their art. We have different items here, even map work we have here. Again, in our library, we have a place called, a section called Social Studies Corner. Here we have world maps uh, and different um, things that actually help learners in reading their social studies. This section particularly is, we have books here donated by the government of Kenya. Uh, government of Kenya for our curriculum. Before you are let five learners from Masara Primary School ready to present to you a poem entitled Open a Book. Yes, Open a Book. Welcome.
My name is Michael Godwill. I am a pupil at Arthur Johnson Primary School. I work uh, I work as a pupil's librarian. My main obligation here is I help the teachers in the organizing of the library, the cleanliness of the library, and uh, the returning of the books on the date agreed upon. Um, as as you as you all know that in a library we all have we have we have rules and these rules must be strictly followed if not followed it might lead to severe punishment in terms of arranging the books i ensure that the books are arranged as per where they are, as per their categories as per their categories where they should be placed and who is placing them because uh they i have a I also have a somebody who's helping me, but unfortunately he was absent today. He wasn't feeling he wasn't feeling well. And uh, other than being a school a pupil librarian, I like reading. My favorite book is called The Grasshopper on the Road. Yeah, it's a really interesting book to me, and that is why I really love books. I always ensure that every point every point of the library. It's clean, not even a speck of dust can be allowed in the library. Okay, I wanted to be sure to, to show that wonderful video before people leave. Um, one question that uh, came in is about ebooks. And um, Samuel, I think you're particularly interested in information communication technology, ICT. So, are, are ebooks useful for the rural libraries? Um, that you're serving? Uh, you're on mute, Samuel. Sorry, I think I was muted there. Uh, I actually look at libraries as a hub for information dissemination and Dissemination of information really does not just lead on uh, providing access to print, but also to electronic resources or rather resources in electronic format. This can be books, this can be journals. And hence, uh, in order to fully be in a position to uh, facilitate access to information in whichever format, then the library needs to be equipped with facilities that are in all formats, including electronic, to be in a position to enhance access to, to, to all forms of resources. And therefore, the library needs uh, to, to embrace ICT uh, connectivity to be in a position now to enhance this particular access to, 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 to resources in electronic format. Well, in our country, at some point, the, uh, the government had started the initiative of supplying laptops to children uh, at the primary school level. But this particular initiative failed at some point because there was one, lack of funding. And number two, there was not sufficient skilled personnel to be in a position to keep this initiative sustained. Then in some primary schools, there was uh, there was no proper infrastructure, uh, including power, to be in a position to consistently charge some of these gadgets. Uh, and uh, these particular uh, facilities and proper infrastructures need to be laid. Up and running, which is something that's of paramount importance if we are to look at providing access to all manner of information resources. Thank you. Um, thank you. Um, so those of you who have um, joined us now, if um, you can use the raise hand feature at the bottom if you have a question to ask. We have just a couple more minutes and then we also want to give a chance to the vice chancellors to uh, to say farewell before we leave. Um, there are some comments coming in from in the chat that from our partners saying how much they've, uh, how much they appreciate this. And um, 
Any, anyone have a question you want to ask before we leave? It's been a long. Well, maybe I'll. Uh, oh, uh, Ernest, yes, please go ahead. You'll need to unmute yourself. Ernest, be sure to unmute. Uh, Ernest, we can't hear you if you're if you're. Maybe we'll go to. Okay. Can you, can, can, can you hear me now? Yeah, it's good. Okay, that's good. I guess I just want to ask the Kenyan team, what are the mode of selection of the schools? Mode of selection of the schools. So how do you how do you choose which which schools will receive libraries? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Joel, do you want to take that since you've been around a bit longer? Yes, I can. Well, uh, I, I don't know the uh, reason why you want because uh, when we started, almost not almost virtually all schools public government uh, schools in Kenya, they're almost the same, in the sense that they don't have a, a library. So if you looked at any direction and picked on any of those books, you find that the need is there. So ours is actually a drop in the ocean. And uh, what has worked for us now, and which uh, with the time we keep reviewing and you'll see, most of our staff members uh, come from those, the community around us. So just uh, link, uh, is like a linkage of the university and the community. So they, they identify or they show interest and say, I have a school in my area and they think they need to benefit. And then we give them the opportunity, they apply. So on the need basis, almost all the schools have the need. So it is, a, somehow first come first serve. The ones who put in good applications, the first ones, we consider those and those uh, who maybe the application is the, they need to work on a bit, then they come in the subsequent year. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, Patrick, uh, let's, I'm gonna just prioritize the questions from our partners. So Patrick, why don't you go next? Be sure to unmute yourself. Thank you very much. Uh, my question goes to uh, the university itself and the team uh, in such a way that I'm looking at the map of the country and the, where they are operating. Um, our, do, you, do, do, do they have the possibility of reaching out to all the other parts as we have tried ourselves in this country, Malawi, I mean, in particular? And then um, if they have like fear, what are their fears? in terms of reaching out to all the other schools? Or do they have uh, a strategic plan in, with them in regards to growth? Because I'm looking at it, uh, in Africa, we have challenges in all the schools whereby books are expensive and we need to uh, expose the children to, 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 to the, with the resources if we are to, to, to make sure that the, the continent keep on changing in terms of education. Uh, Samuel, you want to take that one? Yeah, uh, maybe just mention in brief uh, what is part of the plan for Kibabi University going forward. Uh, like I actually shared on, uh, on, on one of the presentations is that we are located within just uh, uh, at the western parts of this country. And uh, we are situated in three main counties. Well, that is Bungoma County, Rongo, and, uh, and Migori. And uh, Joel is actually in Migori and in Rongo, and I'm in Bungoma. So uh, to be in a position to cover, because our, 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 at this point in time, our mandate is basically within the counties themselves, uh, is to probably select sub-county sections then uh, get them to benefit the schools that are within that particular sub county get them to benefit at this point in time then once that has actually been done because it will be easier now to even be in a position to monitor the schools themselves if they are within located within one particular sub county then proceed in the next uh, maybe 
set of, uh, or rather the next uh, container proceed probably to another county, a different county. So that now as we gradually uh, try to, uh, I mean, to, to focus within the county, then we get to reach out to the specific schools that are within the different counties at, at any particular point. Then uh, there is also, if I got you right, there was that particular issue of uh, uh, books being so expensive and uh, uh, wondering exactly what our fears are. Uh, probably just to mention that as a librarian, uh, well, one of the things that you end up encountering is always about the challenge for, for resourcing. But over and above that, because of the passion that you have, now it becomes your mandate to ensure that resources are accessible to everyone. And like Joel mentioned at some point, uh, there is a rule in library information science. Regardless of whether there are challenges for accessing books, we try and use as, as limited the resources we have as possible to ensure that they are actually reaching out to the, to the, to the particular students themselves or rather to the particular uh, need areas. And uh, th this is the reason as to why now the, uh, the, the African Library Project Initiative comes in uh, as, you know, uh, as a... Uh, to, to actually assist because clearly we all understand that books are never enough and even the government itself is never able to do you know as enough as would have been expected but this initiative initiatives such as this one actually help and therefore going forward we would also want to look at how we can partner with other uh, other uh, partners or rather bring additional partners on board to try and ensure that at one point in time or the other, we are able to meet some of the challenges that we encounter daily. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Jesse, do you want to go ahead? Jesse is uh, one of our partners in Malawi. Okay. Um, mine is just a, is a, a small question to maybe both of them. I would like to, to know how did they convince the university management to support the M and E activity? Because like in our case, it's, I work for a university, University of Malawi, and it's always hard to get funding considering that the university is a public one. So actually to get a, a library, to get a share of a, a good sum of money in the budget is really a hard one. How did you go about it? I'd like to learn. Let's start with Joelle because uh, I'm not sure Kebabi has done this quite yet, but I hope they will soon. Well, uh, I think the first thing is to appreciate that uh, we are lucky that uh, the, broad, uh, the project in Kenya is the uh, really owned and appreciated by our university management. So we have good support. But then from the execution point of view, I keep saying that uh, in our own ways, uh, when I'm talking to my colleagues in the uh, department, we also need to give our condition by volunteering. So you keep the trip as cheap as possible so that the issue is not making the trip very expensive to a level it is not funded, but you try to also contribute your time and willingness to go out on the most affordable way. Uh, I think if the focus is on the affordability, then it will be very possible. Uh, 50,000 to visit uh, the 15 or 10 schools. And by the way, looking at the Kenyan map, you will have a, you'll think those counties are very near, but the geographically you need uh, some of the schools. You, it is a day's trip from uh, uh, just going to three, four schools. It's a whole day's trip. So they are wider apart. So 50,000 might look, uh, 500 USD might look a lot, but when you look at the distances between the schools, 
then you discover that even the staff are volunteering their time just to make it possible. Others we appreciate, the university has uh, been uh, supporting other than the years we were down on COVID. Other than that, the university has been very positive. Thank you. Thank you, Joel. Thank you for that question, Jesse. I think we'll take one final question from Gordon, who's been waiting patiently, and then we'll have a few words of farewell from the two vice chancellors if they're still able to stay. It's already nine o'clock at night in the East Africa for those of us who aren't there might not know that. So I really appreciate everyone staying. Um, Gordon, please go ahead with your question. This is Gordon here from Kenya. Good evening, good morning to everyone. Actually, I don't have a question, but we appreciate the ALP for the good work you are doing because I'm a teacher librarian at, in Kenya, Masara Primary School. So I just want to appreciate the African Library Project, the Rongo Library, <laughs> Kimabi University for the good work they are doing. They are indeed doing an amazing work and we appreciate the work they are doing. Thank you so much. <clears throat> That's a lovely note to end on. And uh, you'll remember Masara Primary is the school where we, where we saw a number of uh, videos. Professor Gudu, would you like to say a few words of farewell? Um, please unmute yourself. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Evra, for giving me opportunity to say a few words of uh, uh, in the closing. I just want to say that as a university, we are extremely, extremely grateful for ALP, for the commitment that we have seen over the years. I want also to say thank you to our team, especially led by Joel Nakitare. Joel has done fantastic work. Uh, uh, I'm impressed at the at the work he does, especially monitoring and evaluating the libraries. Because when we give out the books, we're not sure the university, I mean, the schools are using these books. But Joel and his team, he has organized a team that goes around and has ensured that these books are for sure utilized. And I want to say that uh, as a university, we are uh, in a position to contribute in terms of um, uh, volunteership and also putting some little resources. So we have to ask council, the board that runs the university. We have to ask them and also explain to them that it is important that the universities put some resources for corporate social responsibility. And I thank our council because they have never refused to put in whatever little they can put to ensure that the libraries are supporting the communities. And therefore, uh, Rongo University, we count ourselves lucky that we managed to get this project. And the project is focused in our development in terms of our corporate social responsibility. And we will support it as long as uh, we are still there to be able to help the university grow. I want to thank everybody for this meeting. The contributions and the questions I've seen on the, on the wall will also keep us thinking on how we can continue improving our services to the people, to the stakeholders of the university. And thank you so much once again for giving me this opportunity to say those few words as we come to the end of this meeting. And thank you for attending and contributing. May God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Gudu. Thank you for your leadership. And now we have you on tape saying you're you're going to continue to support. So <laughs> we're very happy about yeah. that. Uh, it looks like Thank Professor uh, Odeo uh, had to step off already, so we won't hear from him uh, in closing. But uh, I want to. We still have forty people on, and we're already out of time. So I think we're going to end now. But I really appreciate the interest and to. Uh, to sing us out, we have one final song from the fantastic choir at uh, Asar Johansson Primary School. Yep. <laughs> Let me say